Hey, welcome friends. Today is day 39, and today's scripture is one of my favorite passages in all of scripture. It's Galatians 5, 19 through 25. And my name is Pastor Jack, and here we go. Now our guiding question over this Lent season is, what is the next brave and right thing that the Holy Spirit wants me to do today? And before we jump into today's scriptures, let's just take a minute to spend some uninterrupted time with God. Now, this is your chance to turn off your cell phone, silence your notifications, take a break from your work or your chores. Create some intentional space in your day when you don't have to multitask. Take a couple of deep breaths in and out and just remind yourself that God is with you today, right now. You might even wanna repeat this short prayer after me and spend just a moment in silence, just being aware of God's presence with you. Maybe it would be something as simple as this. When you breathe in, you just note, I am surrendering my flesh. And as you breathe out, you just note that you are embracing God's spirit. I'm surrendering my flesh, and I am embracing God's spirit. Today's scripture is Galatians 5, 19 through 25, and this is what it says. It says, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the spirit is love and joy, and peace, and forbearance, and kindness, and goodness, and faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Now, I want to tell you a story from a brilliant friend of mine who's a farmer here in the local area here in Michigan. I went and visited him at his farm one day, and I, and I was talking with him about uh, some cattle that he had. And I was like, you know, I'm just curious, like if you, if you have a problem with the cattle, what, what, do you, what do you do? Do you give them vitamin supplements? You know, do you, do, you, do you do something to, like, if you notice that they're a little bit anemic or emaciated or something like that? I'll never forget. He looked at me and he was like, no, Jack, you know what? That, that would be too little too late. And honestly, it would be too expensive. To try to, give, to try to give this many cows vitamins at this particular point, it probably just wouldn't be enough um, to, to give them what they need. So I remember saying, well then, like, do you add additives to the food or something like that that you're giving them? And he was like, nope, you're still not thinking back far enough. Like that would still be basically the same thing, right? I mean, like whether you're injecting it into them or whether you're trying to add it to the feed that we're giving them, it's still gonna be too little too late. Do you do something to the plant? Do you, do you like, do you do pesticides or herbicides or vitamin doses? I, I don't know, I mean, I don't know anything about farming. And he just shook his head and he laughed. And he said, nope, you're still not thinking back far enough. And I remember thinking, well, like, what else is there, man? And, you know, and he said, you, you're gonna have a soil problem. See, if you're not seeing what you want, either in the fruit of something or in the things that you're seeing that you're giving the food to, it's, it's not a problem with the animal. It's not a problem with the feed. It's not even a problem with the plant. It's a problem with the soil. And then he said this, he said, you gotta know, anytime you have a problem, then the soil has either got one of two things going on or maybe a combination of both. Either it has something in it that it shouldn't have, something toxic, something too alkaline, something. It's got a problem in the soil where the soil has something it shouldn't have or it's missing something that it needs. It needs uh, fertilizer or something like that. So either way, if you have a soil problem, you're gonna have a fruit problem. If you have a fruit problem, you're gonna have a feed problem. If you have a feed problem, you're gonna have an animal problem. But here's the deal. At the end of the day, everything is going to root to a soil problem. Either the soil's got something that it shouldn't have, or it needs something that it doesn't. And so I remember that that stuck with me because I think that that's really true for us as well. Uh, you see, based on Galatians 5, as we look at our life, right, we might look at those lists, the, the fruit of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit, and we might look through and say, man, you know what? I'm still pretty angry. 
I might even have problems with drunkenness or, or immorality or whatever those things might be that are showing up. And when we look at the other side, we might say, man, I'm not seeing a lot of love. There's no joy. It's been a long time since I felt joy. I definitely don't have any peace. Like, so like one of the things that we can do is, is we can do like I was thinking and start trying to fix the problem, right? Like we can start out, well, I'm just gonna be more loving. Well, I'm just not gonna be immoral anymore. Like, I understand those, those might be good things to think, but at the end of the day, I think what you'll find is that if you're not seeing the fruit that you wanna see in your life, you probably have a soil problem. There's something deep down in the soil of who you are that's either got something it shouldn't have that it's carrying around, lies, fear, shame, guilt, unconfessed sin, something like that, or it's missing something that it needs, something from the Spirit of God, like an outpouring and an understanding of God's love, His joy, His peace, His patience, His kindness, His goodness, His faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Because you're going to notice that what it says there at the end about Galatians 5 is that it's the fruit of the Spirit. That means the Spirit produces it in us. It's not the fruit of our own striving or our own best efforts. It's something that the Spirit produces in us. So. As we move toward a time of prayer, I want to ask you to reflect on these two questions. Question number one, where in your life is the Holy Spirit inviting you to surrender your sinful nature and embrace the fruit of the Spirit? You might say it like this, where is there something in my life where I need to acknowledge that thing that's in my soil that I need to confess and repent of, ask the Spirit to cleanse me of, and give back to me what rightfully belongs so that I can produce the fruit that he desires. And the question number two, where do you have a soil problem? Where is your life carrying something that it shouldn't be, that it is poisoning your soil? Or where does it need something that it needs in order to thrive? And we want you to know that your prayers don't need to be filled with a bunch of words. You don't have to try to figure out what God wants to hear. You can even be silent before God and wait on him. In fact, you can even repeat this short prayer after me, after we have a moment or two of quiet, and then you can just allow God to speak to you. You can say, God, I'm here and I'm listening. So after a couple of moments of silence here, I'm gonna lead us through a prayer to walk through the soil in our heart. Father, I just confess to you right now that I'm still dragging around that thing, that lie, that sin, that fear, that shame, that guilt that you've already removed. I'm still hanging on to anger, drunkenness, immorality, gossip, whatever those things might be, Father, they are present in my life and I to be rid of them in order to produce the fruit of your spirit. My soil is still carrying stuff it shouldn't be. And so Father, right now, I just confess to you that I have allowed that stuff to be part of my life and I don't want it to be. And so I turn away from it right now in the name of Jesus. I repent of allowing that stuff to stay. And I ask you to cleanse me of it in the name of Jesus. Father, that you would break off of me all that, that, that is against you in my life. That you would wash it away from me. And instead, Father, that you might restore back to me all that rightfully belongs to me as a son or a daughter in your kingdom. And Father, I desire that there would indeed be love and joy, and peace and patience kindness and goodness, and faithfulness and gentleness, and self-control. Father, for your glory, but also for my joy. So Father, would you fill me with your spirit right now? Would you let me sense those things? And would you produce those things in my life that others may be drawn to you? And Father, that I might experience you fully as you desire and intended. And I ask for this in the name of Jesus right now. Amen.